we've been looking at discipleship as a journey, really as a trip towards spiritual maturity. And we get to the final one today, the fifth sphere, where we're looking at the spiritual realm. And really all these spheres track through the outline of the book of Ephesians. So this brings us to Ephesians 6, the last part of this chapter, looking at verses 10 through 20. And we're gonna look at what Paul says here. He's reminding us that we're in a battle of spiritual proportions. We're in a battle that, that has a real enemy and we need to lock together, stand together as the church and fight that battle together. So let's read what Paul says. This is Ephesians 6, starting verse 10. He says this, Finally be strong in the Lord and in all the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. And notice that's the whole armor, the full armor, not a partial armor, right? The whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil if we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to, to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm, stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your, for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak." And Paul is, is masterfully drawing from this, this imagery of, of a, a Roman cohort here. And the Roman soldiers, they were so unstoppable, so powerful because they would band together and they would lock together. And they literally had this formation where they, it would look like a, a tortoise moving through, you know, through a field where they would take their, their big shields. We're gonna look at this a little bit later, but they'd take their shields and they would hold them up, band together, and they literally form this kind of shell as they walked through the battlefield and they were virtually unstoppable. So when it comes to the spiritual realm, we're tempted to oftentimes adopt this phrase, right? Out of sight, out of mind. And we just don't even acknowledge that it exists. And Paul tells the church in Corinth, he says, don't look to the things that are seen, right? Those things are, are transient, they're passing away. Look to the things that are unseen because those are the eternal things. And again, oftentimes we just have that thinking. We, we think of the spiritual realm as something out there. And oftentimes I, you know, I get this picture in my head. We think of our cheesy Hallmark cards with the cuddly, chubby, fat angels that look like Cupid and they have their golden arrows. And that's what we think of when we think of the spiritual realm, right? The devil wants us to, to think of the spiritual realm as this thing out there, not as uh, the realm where there's this raging battle going on, right? That we're, we're being called to in this passage to stand in and fight, to lock together as the church and fight. And uh, C.S. Lewis, famous theologian and author, he has this quote from his famous work, the Screw Tape Letters, and he says this, Indeed, the safest road to hell is a gradual one, the gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turnings, without milestones, without signposts. And again, oftentimes we ignore the signposts that we're in a spiritual battle and we forget. And Paul tells the Corinthian church, he says, we don't wanna be those that are unaware of the devil's tactics, the devil's schemes, right? And again, this is a favorite in the devil's playbook. He wants to get us unaware of the spiritual realm so he can get us isolated. And 1 Peter 5.8, says the devil is a roaring lion prowling around, right, waiting for somebody to devour, somebody to pounce upon when they're isolated and they get away from community of faith, they get away from relationship with other believers. We need to be those that are not unaware of his schemes, his tactics, and that word used there where it says schemes, the NLT calls it the strategies of the devil, right? We need to be aware of that. And again, we have a cunning enemy. The word is actually talks about the wiles of the devil, his trickery, his deception, and that's exactly what he wants to do. He wants to use the same old bag of tricks, gets us alone and isolated so he can pick us off. And, and again, we're an easy target when we're, when we're isolated from community. John 10.10 10 says, he robs, kills, and destroys when we get alone, right? He's, we're easy to pick off. So we need to be aware. We need to remember we're in a battle, but this is only one part of the equation, right? We, we need to be aware of the battle so that we can fight in the battle. And the thing we need to remember is we don't fight in the battle with our own resources. Notice it says in the passage, right, the very first words we read in, in verse 10, finally be strong in the Lord. It doesn't say just be strong in our own strength. It says be strong in the Lord. When we draw strength from our own resources, we're gonna eventually run out, right? We're, 
finite. God is infinite. His strength doesn't run out. So how do we fight in the battle? We suit up with the armor of God, right? We take on the full armor of God that God's provided for us. And notice that's our part in that. We have to actually choose to put on this armor, to use these spiritual resources that God has given. We put on the belt of truth to combat all the lies and the deception. We put on the breastplate of righteousness to guard our hearts, right? We've been those that have been given a new heart if we've trusted in Christ, new creations in Christ to walk in righteousness, not in the old ways that we used to walk in, to hold up our shield of faith, right, that would, will protect against all these fiery darts of the enemy and, and the fiery darts of, of the world will throw at us and, and again, the battle that we're in. We, we have shoes for our feet that are the gospel of peace, right? We bring peace wherever we go. We're carriers of God's peace. And in, in a world that is just crazy, right, surrounding us, we, we need the peace of God and, and we need to be those that bring the peace of God wherever we go. And we put on the helmet of salvation, right, to guard our minds. And scripture talks about our, our minds being renewed as we walk with Him, as we abide in Christ and, and live in relationship with Christ. Our thinking is renewed, our minds are renewed, and we're guarded in our minds with the glorious salvation that we have in Jesus. And then we turn to these offensive weapons, right? We, we take the sword of the Spirit, which Hebrews describes as a, is sharper than any double-edged sword. If you think of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness, he said over and over again to Satan, the tempter, the great deceiver, right? He said, it is written to every test. And he yielded that sword of the Spirit and fought the battle with the sword of the Spirit. And then lastly, it tells us too, to pray at all times, in all, all circumstances, with all perseverance, right? And, and I was thinking through this passage, I was just reminded of an illustration I heard years ago where somebody shared, if you think about 10 people being in a room and if everyone just kind of prayed for themselves, uh, for their whatever prayer requests they have, if you think about that, the, the, that prayer would only be lifted up one time. But if, if those 10 people in the room shared that prayer request with everyone else in the room and then everyone prayed for one another, that those prayer, that prayer would be lifted up. Every person's prayer would be lifted up 10 times, right? And it's not about the number of times that prayer is lifted up, but the point here is, right, is again, being the body of believers that's locking together to pray for one another, to encourage one another, to stand in the fight together and to pray with all perseverance in the battle that we are in. So what if we prayed for one another like Paul is requesting here? He said, he his, notice his prayer request, he says, Pray that words would be given to him to proclaim the gospel fearlessly. What if the church that we banded together, we fought together and we lived out the gospel fearlessly, right? And, and I think of how many times we treat, I know I do, I, I treat this spiritual armor, these resources as just a commodity, kind of a, a, a nice, I think about a shirt that uh, I have many shirts that I've thrown in a thrift store pile that at one time were treasured possessions, right? And then I just kind of got, you know, treat them as old hat and I threw them in that pile and just kind of treat it as like a take it or leave it. And we cannot do that with the spiritual armor, right? We, we need the spiritual armor, God's resources to fight this battle. And, and I was thinking of, a reminder of the story of David and Goliath. You just think of David, shepherd boy, right? He was the youngest and he wasn't even at the battle in 1 Samuel 17, the famous story of David and Goliath. He's told by his father to go take his brother's resources and actually to take some cheese trays. So he's taking his brother's cheese trays and there's this giant, you know, as he approaches the battlefield, right, he sees this giant, this Goliath, that's taunting God's people, that's that's a, you know, the ancient foe, the Philistines that they were, were just a, a long time enemy of God's people. And he sees this giant and David recognized that it was a spiritual battle going on, right? People are, are fearful, they're cowering. They're like, man, who's gonna fight this giant? And he draws upon God's faithfulness in times past. He draws confidence and strength from the Lord. Uh, it, you know, if you think about this passage here, right? He was drawing strength, standing strong in the Lord. And he steps up to the plate and fights the battle, recognizing that it wasn't his to fight, but it was God's battle that he was fighting. So I wanna ask us, how do we fight our battles? Do we draw from our own resources? Do we draw from our own strength? Or do we take up this whole armor of God, the resources that God has provided, right? Weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, standing in the power of God and fighting the battle together. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight.
There's a table that you've prepared for me In the presence of my enemies It's your body and blood you shed for me This is how I fight my battles There's a table that you've prepared for me In the presence of my enemies It's your body and your blood you shed for me This is how I find my battles This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. In the valley, I know that you're. And surely your goodness and mercy follow me So my weapons of praise and thanksgiving This is how I find my battles And I This is how I fight my battles This is how I 
This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how.